So you're all excited. You've just treated yourself to a nice new palette so you can mix your watercolour paints and you put your paint on and it just all beads up and it won't spread and it won't mix and it's really annoying. And you think, is there some way I can fix this? Good news is, yes, there is. And we're going to test out four different methods. My name's Liz Chatterton. I'm a professional watercolour artist based in Berkshire. And every week I bring you a tip, trick or technique that I wish someone had told me when I started painting. And this week it's all about sorting that palette out. So whether you're using pans or tubes, you're going to need something to mix your paint in. Uh, to get the consistency you want and the colour you want. And palettes tend to come in three materials. You've got plastic, metal and ceramic. And they've all got advantages. I mean the big advantage of plastic is that it's cheap. If you drop it, it doesn't break, which is fantastic. The big disadvantage of plastic, and I'll show you one of my old ones, is that it tends to stain over time. And uh, yes, ignore the gold in that. <laughs> I've been doing some gold leafing. Anyway, it, it stains over time and that makes it very hard to judge what colour you've mixed. Ceramic, on the other hand, and this must be about five years old, just cleans up and again gosh I've got gold leaf absolutely everywhere <laughs> um, you know cleans up doesn't stain brilliant but of course it's heavy and if you're out and about painting or going to an art class that's annoying and it breaks I on one memorable occasion I've been doing a demonstration and wanted to finish my piece at home so I had my palette just put some cling film over the top thought, oh, I'll take that home, won't spill it. And I put it on top of my car as I was loading all my stuff in. And of course I drove off with it on top of my car and it didn't survive. So they break, those stain. You could go for metal, which is light and um, doesn't obviously break, but I like a standalone palette. I personally like a daisy wheel palette. So you can't get those in metal. Anyway, let's put that to one side. So let's look at the plastic palette. This one's designed for acrylics. Um, someone happened to give it to me. And you can immediately see the problem with staining. I have put one lot of paint on there once and it's stained already. So let's ignore that. <laughs> but the real issue is put some paint on and look how it beads up. It doesn't sit smoothly on that surface. You can't mix your colours easily and it's just really, really annoying. So the question is, can we do anything about it? Now we could just use it, be patient and with time it will settle out. I mean, if we look at, oh gosh, one of my paint boxes here with a very mucky palette there. You know, I've used this and used this and the paint doesn't bead in the same way. So you could just be patient. But how long is it going to take and you want to use it now? Well, let's look at some of the options of what we can do. The first thing you could do is maybe use some sandpaper and you could just abrade the area and see whether that works. So let's try that. The second thing you could do is to use a metal scourer like a pot scourer. So we'll try that in one of those. I wondered about using magic eraser because that has a very gentle scouring action because my concern is if we scour this too much, we're going to get staining, even worse staining than we've already got. And then my fourth possibility is using toothpaste, 
that's often recommended because it's a very gentle abrasive. So I thought we'd have a go in four of those sections and use the last one as our sort of control. How scientific of me. So toothpaste. Lovely Colgate for naturally whiter teeth. Might even take off some of the staining, who knows. So, I'm rubbing it in. My palette now smells minty fresh and then I obviously need to clean that out properly because I do not want my watercolours to be minty fresh. Right, then um, just some, this is medium sandpaper. And I'm going to fairly gently, I don't want to scratch the hell out of this. Just take the shine off there. And again, I'm going to just have to clean that out because there's now sort of plastic dust. I can certainly see scratches and that's gone. Then I've got the pop scourer. not as abrasive as the um, sandpaper for sure. I'm not sure quite how much to, to use. So let's see, just clean that out. Then I have got my Magic Eraser. So if you know Magic Eraser, it's a melamine sponge that is designed for, for household cleaning but it's also terribly handy in art. So you dampen it, squeeze it out, then we could use that. Now I can't feel that scratching at all. So I wonder if it is doing anything. Therefore I'm going to give it a little bit more than the others perhaps. Now the moment of truth. We'll put a little bit this is thalo blue, so it is a super staining colour, and I did actually use it for that reason. Okay, so that definitely spreads out better, doesn't it? But can you see, if I just wipe that away for you, some of those scratches from the sandpaper are already catching the colour. Now this was the pot scourer and frankly, that hasn't done an awful lot, has it? It's still really beading up. That's quite disappointing, I have to say. Let's see, yeah, again, that magic eraser hasn't done a huge amount. Perhaps I just need to do more. And then this was with the toothpaste. And though it's not as good as the um, sandpaper, that's not too bad. That actually feels like you could mix on it. And yes, it is beading, but certainly not as much as those two. And then that was the one that we haven't treated which you can see is just beading up. So for my totally non-scientific experiment here, if I had a plastic palette, and to be honest, if I have a choice, I will always go ceramic, and I would suggest you do, but if I'm out and about painting and I need something lightweight, I will use plastic. If I had one I needed to sort out, I can see that the sandpaper definitely solves the problem quickest but I don't like the damage that I've obviously done. I can actually feel that that feels rough to my my um, paintbrush. The metal scourer has also done a lot of damage and hasn't fixed the problem so I'm just not bothering with that ever again. Really disappointed with my magic eraser because 
you might have seen the film I've done about using it for correcting watercolour mistakes. I think this stuff is brilliant, a real game changer, and yet certainly has had no decent impact on that palette. But I am very impressed with the toothpaste. Can't see any damage. It hasn't solved the problem as much as the sandpaper, but there isn't any damage there. So I reckon that will have saved you quite a lot of heartache because though it is beading a bit, it's certainly not as bad as those or the untreated one. If I've got a new plastic palette that I need to uh, get into shape, I'm gonna be grabbing my Colgate, I reckon.